Alright, horse. Hey, thanks so much for uh, joining us in the uh, your own little private tour of uh, Amsterdam in uh, our nice little Audi. Um, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what your background is? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm uh, Joris Kramwinkel. I uh, work for Artec Finance for over 10 years. Started just after graduation. And uh, my personal life, I'm a father of four sons. Oh, wow. <laughs> So I don't have time for hobbies. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I, uh, I only have three, uh, and you're now the second person I've interviewed uh, that uh, has had four kids. Um, and I always feel like I have a lot with three, but... Yeah, our youngest are twins, so I'm oh, cheating okay. a yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how old's your oldest? Nine. Nine, oh, nine, okay. Nine, yeah. eight, and almost three. Yeah, twins. mine uh, I think are a little bit easier now because mine are 20, 16, and 14. Oh. Um, so... Uh, Get they're, they're pretty self-sufficient at this get point. Get some free time back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I just have to make sure I make fun at work. Mm. <laughs> There's not much time left. Yeah. Right, right. And at work, I, uh, yeah, I've, I have a background in, in, in high-performance computing. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually graduated here in, in Amsterdam, but I didn't saw the city that much. So I mm. uh, was mostly in the university. Right, right. And started uh, different engineering roles. At, uh, at Ortec Finance, and uh, what we do as a company is um, we design mathematical models to make better financial decisions. Right. And wrap that into software and ship that as, as, as SaaS solutions. Oh, as SaaS solutions. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, uh, in your environment, is like a big kind of Kubernetes and OpenShift. Um. Lately, Lately? Yeah, 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 we're moving yeah. there. So yeah. uh, I was responsible for setting that in motion indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, well, our company, uh, I think for the last 15 years, we acknowledge we are, it's a 40 year old, what you would now call FinTech, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and, and, and formerly we, it, it was uh, shipping software uh, made by econometricians for econometricians. Uh -huh. So we had an R&D department specifically focusing on mathematics and econometrics and yeah seven years ago i convinced uh, my boss who's now cto that we should also research technology because the landscape was changing changing so fast like uh, right. and, and every tier right on the front end uh, the back end also database technologies that was the era of the no sequel yep yeah and uh, yeah i i i i, I let myself a part-time position next to my engineering activities mm -hmm. uh, in the lab. Try to look for what's next. What's next, yeah. yeah, And uh, yeah, then I uh, became responsible for all new to the company tech. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of cloud technologies uh, also given my HPC's uh, interest, cloud technologies in, uh, in our lab. Mm -hmm. um, I think our first Kubernetes experiments were in 16. 016, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, playing around with serverless and uh, uh, yeah, with the, with the cloud. Uh, but you were doing serverless in 16, in 2016? Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. The, just after Lambda game came out, I had to supervise, I also supervised students, mm -hmm. uh, master's, master's students, and, and one of the professors was saying, yeah, you should check out this Lambda uh, thing? Amazon yeah. Lambda. Yeah. And, and actually we did research, where is the break even point back then? Mm -hmm. to, to make it uh, cost efficient. Yeah. Because if your containers are, con are utilizing uh, or are having a high CPU utilization, then it's cheaper to use regular container technologies. Right. And then, so that, that's, <clears throat> that's one example, but we, we, we did many. And after, I think just prior to the COVID crisis with the CTO office, we revised um, the whole enterprise technology strategy. And, oh, okay. and, and that was, for me, the opportunity to get all these technologies where we're in my lab for a while <laughs> right. into what I call the factory. Yeah. And uh, so together with uh, with my colleagues, uh, uh, with the chapter leads, we, we wrote out this, this strategy. And uh, yeah, cloud native. Mm -hmm. uh, as far. And event-driven as well? How, I mean, because typically in FinTech, right, a lot of stuff is, uh, you know, because I did, uh, I was a consultant for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of that was in uh, fintech or financial services. I actually did some work for Thompson. Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, software as a service, about making good decisions. Um, but uh, 
you know, a lot of those architectures have been enterprise service bus, you know, uh, yeah. kind of event driven architectures for yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah. Is was your environment like that, or was it more um, kind of, uh, you know, because in some ways modeling is more like a, you know, you, you put in the the parameters right and outcomes and answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we don't have we have event driven architectures at the moment mm -hmm. uh, just because the uh, yeah the, the 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 cloud native stack allowed us to embrace these these new paradigms right. more easier than in uh, traditional ops right now on premise operations these these type of architectures are not not supported um, but in 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 a nutshell, we, we build a lot of calculation engines indeed. Right. Yeah. Uh, and some of these engines are used by, by banks, uh, uh, large Dutch banks, mm -hmm. uh, use our models from their mobile app. So, oh, uh, interesting, yeah. So then uh, we forecast kind of the, the probability of reaching your investment goals if yeah. you're an individual investor. And then, then we need to cater for an answer, like mm -hmm. an API, within two seconds. Oh, yeah. So that's number crunching, uh, multi-threaded. Uh, uh, well, it's hard. It's even harder to do multi-threaded, like than typical, because you're trying to put all the calcs together, yeah, right, yeah, at yeah, some yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is uh, yeah. adds another layer of complexity. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that, yeah, so that, that that's more. Uh, yeah, some people call it microservice. Like yep. uh, we call it microservice or services. We we are not married with the term yeah. microservice. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm still like, you know, it's a service-oriented architecture. It's a, the yeah, idea exactly. is like it's yeah, services, yeah, 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 whether yeah. they're big or small services, like do we yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, I think the what I have liked about the microservice buzz term kind of has been um, kind of a push towards like the Unix philosophy of like, you know, this thing does one thing well and yeah. the way you get stuff is by yeah, changing yeah, the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, so that's been a big help. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, it's still a service, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's still so. a service. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, we also have, yeah, in, in terms of uh, doing stuff well, like uh, forecasting the balance sheet of a pension fund mm -hmm. is a single responsibility thing, right? Right. But you can imagine we have 600 lines of code <laughs> that doing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and these are these are uh, so so we our product ranges from from web. Uh, web products with GUI, without GUI, with only API, but also more and more traditional uh, desktop uh, products. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in 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 the era of uh, it's 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 by ecometricians for ecometricians, you can imagine uh, there are not thousands of users. Right, uh, right. Yeah. And there's no business case to uh, to kind of have that kind of scale. Yeah, right, to, right. to to sh to 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 migrate thousands of screens in a desktop app. Right. And and yeah. and there we 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 so we do believe in thin client mm -hmm. uh, fat server so i also worked on uh, trading desks so yes, oh yeah I know, yeah, I know exactly yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so all the compute part yep uh of course we we we, we package that now in containers mm -hmm. and uh, uh where we were first uh, uh doing distributed computing on, on bare metal and on self-managed data centers mm -hmm. Our enterprise technology strategy stated uh, we do managed over do it yourself. So yeah. we, we stop maintaining data centers. <laughs> Interesting. And, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, yeah. and I'm sure that kind of containerization has also allowed a lot more of your kind of code reuse in different scenarios, right? Where you probably had a lot more custom thing, like one thing that worked for desktop and one thing that worked for, I don't know, mobile, right? And, and now with the containerization, yeah, yeah. you get a lot more usage, you know, shared usage. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what, what's uh, fun is that you, you get these, these advantages where you don't expect them. So, uh, for instance, now our CI CD architecture is, is almost the same for Java web Mm -hmm. As for the back end of, of, of desktop applications, yeah. uh, and, and that's way easier uh, to maintain. If everyone right. ships their stuff into container, as yep. long as it's a container, uh, all the management and the GitOps, all these, uh, we, we can standardize uh, a lot oh, of lo these yeah. uh, stuff, not caring about what's inside. Right, right. And, 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 and formally, we have like uh, uh, 
branches and operations that do do Microsoft technologies mm -hmm. or do do Java technologies. Well, especially you know? especially if you're like shipping to a desktop, right? Then that means you you know you need every version of everything in your tool yeah, to be yeah, the same, yeah, and yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know, and you need to make sure you don't conflict with local, you know, which you know in a kind of a server scenario, it's a lot yeah, simpler, yeah, right? Because yeah. you can say, nope, just dedicate a VM that looks like this, and yeah, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. work this way. Yeah. Um, you know, but with desktop applications, that's a whole nother nightmare, and it's not yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. You know, with with those kinds of tools, it's not like you can have, you know, uh, a, a real simplistic desktop application because it needs to still perform, right? It needs to no, be able yeah, to yeah, utilize yeah. that, you know, um, uh, you know, all the processing power, or whatever, of that workstation. Yeah. yeah, but not if it's a thin desktop and all the computing is done uh, done elsewhere, and that's that's where we we're moving. Yeah. To. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's yeah. funny. I think the. You know, the, the thin client was like the hot thing, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago? Yeah. Like a yeah. long time ago. <laughs> and it just kind of never took really. Yeah, I mean, there were yeah, some yeah. scenarios where it worked, but, you know, I think uh, we're no, finally getting back to that because of mobile. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, the same holds for a lot of paradigms in yeah, computer science. Yeah. I think the, you mentioned the event bus. Right, right. That's also uh, event driven, it's also very popular now and well, also and, very powerful. Uh, done right yeah well yeah. and it's yeah. like that one is it always cracks me up because um i actually was doing event driven architectures using uh com on windows uh, 25 <laughs> years ago um because i'm old but uh you know it's it's just funny how, like you know we keep looping and there's there's a great talk uh i don't know if he's still doing it but he used to do it this talk at oscon every year which is basically like everything in computing was like invented by 1979. Yeah, and then yeah, he just yeah, kind of yeah. goes through all the yeah, modern yeah, stuff yeah, and he's yeah, like, oh yeah. yeah, this is just like the thing yeah, they did yeah, in the yeah, 60s, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just really amusing. Yeah, um, but in all terrains also, in the, the database also, first we had to decouple compute from storage yeah. and now we're bringing back the compute right, right. <laughs> to, the, Bring it to, yeah. to the data. Because you can't move the data fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, and then yesterday there was, uh, I, I, I attended a few talks in the EdgeCon uh, uh, track mm -hmm. yeah, where they mentioned that we will start shipping more and more uh, software to devices. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah the, so I just moved into a new building uh, on the campus uh, and uh, we, uh, you know, I was I was actually giving a brief talk about kind of edge computing and and what it is for the students mm -hmm. and uh, you know and my, part of my examples was like yeah in in our in that building alone so yeah it's 16 floors but still it has you know trash cans mm -hmm. uh, you know mm -hmm. everywhere but every single trash can has scales in it that you can get real time data of the weight in that individual yeah. trash can. Um, and one of the really cool things that Boston University has done with their contracts is that now if they hire a vendor to do, I don't know, scales and trash cans, I don't know. If yeah, they, yeah. Um, BU has as part of their contract that they can have the data back and that data be public. Ah. So we're basically generating like data science, you know, data yeah, sets yeah, yeah. Uh, for, you know, essentially students to work on uh, nice. based on our actual consumption. So it's, it's really kind of neat. Nice. Uh, it's one of the things I've got to look into over the summer is like, okay, you told me this exists. How do I actually <laughs> get it? You know, um, but uh, yeah, because you know, there's a, often a big difference between, oh yeah, there's a data set for that yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, actually yeah. having it on my laptop, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so what do you think is, you know, kind of from your perspective, what do you think this is going to be the next kind of big change? Is it going to be kind of getting all those things to like a cloud native scenario? Is that really the next major point or are you already looking at something else on the horizon that you think is going to uh, impact your, you know, approach to these problems that, you know, Kubernetes or OpenShift or, you know, these, these tool chains kind of help enable or help you think about? Yeah, good question. Um, I think first of all, from from our context, we acknowledge that this this transformation takes time. Mm -hmm. I think even Netflix took six or seven years to to go from on prem to uh, to the cloud. And what we see now is the technology is actually pretty easy. Mm -hmm. At some point, yeah. If you certain, if certain you, if maturity, you get far enough along, yeah, 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 yeah. You you fought your battles, and uh, sometimes it converges, and 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 you see engineers becoming uh, better every time in embracing new mm -hmm. technologies uh, and and platforms play a big role 
in, 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 in to broadcast these, these new technology to our engineers. But the biggest challenge now is to, to change the humans, mm -hmm. like the, 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 the organization uh, aspect to, to these technology changes. I'm a right. strong, strong, strong believer of uh, Conway's law. Uh -huh. And that the uh, systems you build reflect kind of the... The organization uh, behind the, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. how you communicate as an organization. Right. And, and as a company, uh, we have four different units. Mm -hmm. uh, and so and you have four different pieces of software. Four right. different pieces right. of software, but also catering four different markets. So these, these cultures, although our, we are headquartered in, in the Netherlands, and yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, we do have a, a large international work base, but we, I see so many uh, differences uh, within the teams already. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. And and so yeah, so so how are you going about that? There was actually uh, we did a talk in Detroit uh, with Ford. Uh, did a panel talking about um, their transformation, like the same kind of scenario of like how do you bring you know your you know swath of programmers um, to the cloud native world. Yeah, yeah, but that, yeah, that that's the onboarding part, but also in the running part, mm -hmm. right? Like you should, your delivery process changes. Uh, uh, even the 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 the, the salespeople, uh, the the uh, consultants, the whole workforce is, mm. is is affected one one way or the other. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so what are you doing to try to? you know, teach them all of that? Are you, you know, doing big camps? Are you doing, uh, you know, publications? Are you, how do you, how do you bring that information to them? Yeah, so, uh, so every time we onboard a new product line, mm -hmm. we, uh, we are hosting these, these college tours uh -huh. uh, uh, with tailored, uh, tailored sessions for, okay. for, for engineers, but also for the non-engineers. Uh -huh. And, what we 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 have eight product lines. We're now onboarding the third one, uh -huh. and and we're teaching <laughs> way differently. Like each time, you learn also learn how to do it better. We we improve, but also yeah. the content is is different. Um, yeah, we're now busy with onboarding a, a team that has a also re release a cycle for configuration. Oh, t right. Typically yeah. in the financial sector. Uh, you should. You can't release fast always. Uh, right. If if you ship a SaaS solution to a bank, mm -hmm. you cannot do that twice a week. Right. right. <laughs> you can. Yeah. The bank is not equipped to do that, or right. most banks are not. Yeah. So what happens is you don't ship new code. You ship new configuration. Yeah. Uh, more often and yeah, it's, uh, it's way different dynamics. So we now implement kind of the GitOps. Uh, a GitOps stack, mm -hmm. but people are not familiar with code. Right. But with so you're also like having to train your customers as well about how to like work with your products as well. Also, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But but also the consultants who are responsible for, oh, for shipping right. the yeah. right uh, right environments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. I still remember. Um, so way back in the day, I did a consulting project for Fidelity, who you're probably yeah, with. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, that's a client of ours. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, it's a, the finance world is actually a pretty small world. Um, <laughs> yeah. <but> the, uh, <laughs> Curious uh, what you consulted them. <laughs> yeah, so uh, with, uh, with the project we worked on, we were, um, uh, we were looking for a way to basically kind of like change how authorization and authentication worked in the existing system. Yeah, um, yeah. And we, you know, budgeted for like a three month project or whatever to do this work. And when we were working on it, I kind of saw this way we could kind of kind of slide it in um, and so we were done in like a month yeah but we we missed the release day by by a day two days or something oh really so fidelity essentially paid us to stay on board for another month until the next release window no, yeah, because no, yeah. it was you know because we would have disappeared into other projects you know or whatever and and it was more valuable to them to you know pay for us to no, be around no, yeah, yeah. than it was to risk that yeah. configuration update right or that yeah, release yeah, update yeah, window. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I still think about that with, you know, talking about, you know, continuous integration, continuous deployment, uh, 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 and, uh. you know, where some organizations, I also worked uh, like in pharmaceutical, uh, where, you know, if you, if you make a mistake and you drop a transaction on the ground, uh, it was a million dollar fine. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. under some conditions. So, you know, there's some scenarios where 
you want the same quality of update and change and that kind of stuff, yeah, but yeah, you don't yeah. want the same pace. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah And I think yeah. you see that in you know finance, uh, in, like I said, yeah, you see yeah, it in yeah. pharmaceuticals. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting that you're experiencing that and trying to yeah. figure out how to you know how do you integrate that with these kind of modern development yeah, yeah, yeah. you know methods. Yeah, and 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 when it really comes to the surface is when you design your GitOps flow because mm -hmm. that's really fun. Actually, yeah. last week we did that with the team uh, that's responsible for configuration. Mm -hmm. And then that's where the technology and the process come together, mm -hmm. right? So uh, then we start, okay, how do you want it to work? And uh, right, right, right. <laughs> how does it go right now? And uh, a lot of handshakes, eh? a lot of handovers, uh, which we now in, in, in the current realm, we can, we can automate. Right. Uh, and also with the GitOps, it's so powerful. You can uh, program your, your policies. So if mm -hmm. someone does an update in configuration, you can say, okay, someone who's not the author, who has this role in the, in the AD group of the company is right. allowed to, to merge this, uh, this pull request. And, uh, also, if someone releases configuration, how do you interact with the engineers? Because they are responsible in the end for the total service uh, right. uh, that is shipped. So. That, that's a very nice, these are very nice whiteboard sessions yeah. Uh, yeah. where you kind of uh, shape your, 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 both your technology and process in one. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, I think I missed a turn, so I was just checking to see if I... Uh, a small detour. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we'll tour, tour this little part of the Amsterdam. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, it's, I think, you know, as we, you know, as we are able to uh, divorce a lot of the, um, you know, kind of the operating environment from the application environment, you know, using containers and Kubernetes and, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, I think it's, it's getting interesting about, you know, we're moving more and more to almost like, you know, uh, a graphical design of the of your systems um, you know where you have to like have kind of call outs and stuff or like okay this happens in this kind of yeah, scenario yeah, yeah, and, yeah, you know yeah. these kinds of privileges and stuff like that yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know I don't think we have the tooling anywhere near there but it's really <laughs> starting to feel more like you know you're you're kind of writing a run book for your yeah, operating yeah, yeah, environment yeah, yeah. in this very you know mostly YAML uh, you know yeah, 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 uh, yeah. that you know, and, and you kind of just say, okay, here's the run book. Oh, computers, now yeah, go yeah, yeah. follow the run book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, I have a, a colleague in my team who's very uh, visual minded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he always draws a lot of uh, uh, withdrawal.io or whatever. Yeah. Lucid charge. You have yeah. many, many uh, places you can make, make these, these processes tangible right, by, right. By, by just using icon sets and. Yep. Uh, these also come with the uh, uh, Kubernetes icons, with uh, your yeah. hyperscaler uh, icons. Oh, yeah, we I'll, do, have to, we, I'll have to try that. Um, we we the, do uh, that a lot, yeah. actually, yeah. because uh, in the end, it's what you say, under the hood, it's all YAMLs. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we sometimes say, how do you like them YAML? Because oh, nice, it's, nice. it's It's a little throwback to my, yeah. where I live in Boston. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, I totally understand. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I do the same thing with a whiteboard and my students all the time, right? Where I'm like, okay, you know, this is how these pieces fit together and those pieces fit together. And my drawing is terrible, um, yeah, as is yeah. my handwriting. Uh, so it's always <laughs> this like chicken scratch all over the whiteboard. And then half the time the students want to take a picture of it so they can remember it yeah, for yeah, uh, yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to go to the next one. Um, and, uh, and I'm like, you know, like, can you actually read this? Because yeah, you know, uh, I can barely yeah, yeah. read it. I wrote it. Um, yeah, yeah. But so it's... Uh, yeah, um, but that that visual component I think is uh, yeah, really yeah, important yeah. to a lot of these scenarios. Um, yeah, yeah. Great. So so a lot of stuff we do is is about visioning the possible, mm -hmm. and then tailor tailor the, the the processes and technologies. Right, right. Uh, so let me just uh, convince it that we're going to where I want to go. Oops. Walk there. I want to drive there. I think this will work. Uh, I think I make um, Google Maps very angry when I'm driving <laughs> this. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not familiar with here. 
Yeah, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm starting uh, to get the hang of it, but yeah. it's still a little, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so what we want to do is actually just kind of take a right right here, and then there's an entrance into the parking lot. Oh, nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you uh, joining us for a little uh, ride around Amsterdam. Um, you know, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah.